Selamat uh, datang. Salam hormat kepada uh, Datuk Presiden Parti Datuk Hendri Samin. Ali-ali Majlis Tertinggi, uh, Timbalan Timbalan Presiden uh, Datuk uh, Zainal Nasaruddin, uh, Timbalan Presiden uh, dua saudara Sylvester De Simon, uh, Bendahari Thomas Chen dan ahli-ahli majlis tertinggi yang ada di depan sini dan bukan semua ada di depan sini sebenarnya ada di belakang juga ada yang tidak tidak sempat datang juga terima kasih kerana dapat meluangkan masa untuk hadir pada hari ini ini adalah sidang akbar untuk parti kerjasama anak negeri jadi saya tidak perlu bercakap panjang nanti kita jawab soalan-soalan daripada para wartawan yang ada datang pada hari inilah uh, cukup untuk uh, saya katakan ini adalah sidang akbar yang pertama dan saya percaya ada banyak lagi pertama dan paling baru sebab sebenarnya parti ini baru kami terima surat kelulusan menggunakan nama parti, bendera logo dan beberapa perubahan perlembagaan pada pukul 8.20 malam semalam jadi masih baru lagi ini, ini baru goreng pisang panas ini. Jadi tanpa membuang masa, saya serahkan majlis ini kepada yang berbahagia, Datuk Presiden. Dr. Paul Porodong, selaku siasat agung Parti Kerjasama Anak Negeri. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, say good afternoon and um, I would like to welcome members of the press and members of our Supreme Council that is here, our Deputy President, Saudara Zainal Nasiruddin, and also Sylvester De Simon, our Secretary General, uh, Dr. Paul Parodong, and our Bandahari uh, Agung, uh, Treasurer General, is um, uh, Thomas Sen. And here we have uh, Lawrence Yong from at the end there. We have Alex Wong and we have Peter Bitti. And also, uh, we have Debbie Mandadi and Mr. Lan at the end there. Uh, these are the team that working very hard uh, for the party. And I want to go straight into my statement, um, which I have prepared a statement. Uh, it is in soft copy. So those of you who want a copy, uh, we will either send you through WhatsApp or through email. Uh, it's better. I was trying to print just now, last minute, I cannot print. So my apology for the half an hour late. But bear with me, it will be a short press conference. Good afternoon. I wish to thank all members of the press for attending um, our party uh, first official press conference this afternoon. The purpose of this press conference is to inform or announce to the public the successful change of name, successful change of name symbol and other constitutional changes of Parti Kerjasama Rakyat Sabah, our old name, where as of 6 July 2017, Parti Kerjasama Rakyat Sabah, or PAKAR, will now be publicly known as Parti Kerjasama Anak Negeri with an approved acronym, acronym Anak Negeri. The party would simply be called Parti Anak Negeri. And bracket Sabah lah, for Sabah. Parti Anak Negeri is a native-based but multiracial political party where all Malaysians, regardless of race or religion, of Sabah and Sarawak origins, and also Malaysians from Semenanjung who hold permanent state status in Sabah or Sarawak, who subscribe to the party aims and objectives can be a member. So that means our we are native-based, but multiracial in the sense that um, all Malaysians regardless of race or religion of Sabah and Sarawak origins means they are born here and Malaysian from Semenanjung also who become permanent citizen here Bermastautin di Sabah atau Sarawak then who subscribe to the party aims and objectives can be a member this has been approved by the Registrar of Society although we are Anak Negeri Party but the Registrar of Society has approved this part that members from Sarawak, from Sabah, from Semenanjung 
who now resides permanently in Sabah are anak negeri members. Then known as Pakar, I would like to explain the origin of this party. Then known as Pakar, Parti Anak Negeri was formed in 2013. Uh, dalam tahun 2013, parti ini telah ditubuhkan oleh the founding president, Saudara Zainal Nasiruddin. He is here on my right hand side. And as part of the renewal and rebranding strategy, Pakar elected a new office bearers during his AGM on the 30th of April 2017, and also passed a resolution to amend the party constitution, including changing the party's name and symbol. That was on 30th April 2017. The founding president, Zainal Nasiruddin, formally invited Datu Hendrus Amin to attend the AGM and to become a member, and nominated him as the new party president. <coughs> Datu Hendrus Amin was duly elected as the new president by all delegates, and Zainal Nasiruddin became his number two in the party. <coughs> I wish to take this opportunity to thank all Pakar delegates for their unanimous support. I wish to mention our new, new office bearers. This, I will give you a copy. Eh? Pengurus tetap is Datu Gulam Tomani, Timbalan Pengurus Tetap NC Engko Musa bin Ganu, Presiden Datu Hendri Nusamin, Timbalan Presiden 1 Zainal Haji Nasiruddin, Timbalan Presiden 2 Sylvester Di Simon, Naib Presiden 1 Sukiman Abdul Rahman, Naib Presiden 2 Willy Broad Misi, Ketua Wanita Mariam Adilon, Ketua Pemuda Al Hafiz Makpuris Alpa, Setiausaha Agung Dr. Paul Porodong, Bendahari Agung Thomas Sen Chauin, Penolong Setiausaha Agung Milkusin Abdillah, Ketua Penerangan Dusip Gani alias Paulus, Ahli Majlis Tertinggi Jonar Elder Bibi Kobong, Sabrin Andau, Ahmad Alang Laut, Yakub Damsa, Asmaran Muhammad Esa, Ferdaus Jainal, Istatius John Jinuli Tasius, Gafri Abu Bakar uh, ben, ben Salibara, Muhammad Taib, Hasaman, Lubin, Pile, Iskandar, Ismail, Julian, Peter, Dr. Oswald, Henry, Daibi, Donisius, dan sebagainya. As you can see, this party, we were invited and a few of us joined the party while maintaining the existing structure. So, I want to explain further that now we can now admit the Chinese and other Malaysians into our party, we will go into another restructuring exercise. So the presence of our Chinese friend here is supporting our party. They are our cell group, but after restructuring, they will be all uh, inside. So very soon, I had to discuss with the, my deputies and all the other members. So what we have given you here is the existing one, okay? The, the newly restructured one is, is, is different. As part of the rebranding exercise, Pakar delegates voted to empower the Supreme Council to submit application for change of name, logo, address, and other relevant constitutional amendment. Okay. Pakar first Supreme Council meeting was held after the AGM on 7 May at Puri Inanam Hotel. The new president, Datu Hendrus Amin, was given the task of carrying out the task of implementing the mandate of the party AGM on 30th April 2017 means to submit an application. So, submission of application for change of name and symbol was made on the 8th of June 2017 to the Registry of Society by the President, Dr. Henry Samin himself, accompanied by the Secretary General, Dr. Paul Porodong. I would like to give you the chrono chronology of event uh, to the change of name. 30th April, we have our AGM. 7 of May, our Supreme Council meeting to discuss and propose the change name and matters. On the 8th of June, we, uh, we formally submitted our application to Putrajaya, 8th of June. And uh, we were struggling from 8th of June until we received a letter of inquiry, a query on the 21st of June. We received official query from ROS to ensure write up on constitutional changes are in matrix. So, 22nd of June, we 
uh, send back the amendment in matrix matrix form to po uh, through post laju but on the 5th of July the party president presented himself to Ross to be interviewed by Puan Salini anak perempuan Esom who is a senior ROS registrar party uh, requested uh, they requested clarification from the party on the change of name and criteria for membership at 2 p.m. the party president received an email attached with draft amendment requesting correction to spellings and grammar the party president made the necessary correction and returned draft amendment back to Ross via email at 3 p.m. the controversy at the time was actually the name anak negeri why is it that you are anak negeri native why is it you admitting Chinese it doesn't tally with your name and your membership and um, but I explained that we take anak negeri as anak sabah anak negeri and uh, we are bringing the Chinese into because they are born here or they are staying here so to us they are anak negeri and just to remind you uh, on the fifth on the recently on the eighth uh, we were in Tinangol we have a ceremony where we adopted the Chinese as an adopted brother and sister so we adopt them into anak negeri so we have a formal ceremony at the time uh, we receive the pao and then we drink coconut together to symbolize our friendship our brotherhood so I would like to stress this huh? I would like to say this to my Chinese friends Sabah is your homeland you are born here we work together here we marry each other we die here together so we adopt you as our brother and sisters you become one of us and then we fight for our state under the banner of anak negeri which is now approved by the registrar of society okay. to, uh, to us this is very important we cannot be separated the, the mamagun which is the karazan the, 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 the smurut and the sungai karazan dusun murut and sungai cannot be separated from the bajau suluk from this uh, from the kepulauan the pesisir pantai and we don't want to be separated from the Chinese as well we want to fight as one as anak negeri Sabah now Ross uh, gave his approval and letter was dated 6 of July that was the date in fact they are very quick I would like to thank them because after the interview I think they have um, uh, approved it on the 6th of July and on the top, but on the 12th of July only on the 12th of July we were notified so on the 13th of July the president flew to KL for a day trip to collect the letter from Ross and I received it at 12pm 12, 12 jam 12 12 petang now the summary of amendment by Ross um, I, I have but uh, I have not, I have not um, I have a copy with me here which I will give to you the following is our anak negeri five point core objective now this is important I want to explain now what is our core objective of our core five, five only number one we fight for unity rights and dignity of anak negeri Sabah and Sarawak And we want to fight the rights and dignity of Anak Negeri Sarawak, Sabah and Sarawak based on Article 153 of the Federal Constitution where kedudukan istimewa Melayu semenanjung Malaysia tetapi Anak Negeri for Sabah and Sarawak. So kedudukan istimewa for Anak Negeri Sabah and Sarawak to us is very very important. We want to take it literally. If the Melayu is in Semenanjung, it is anak negeri for Sabah and Sarawak. And although anak negeri means natives, we are inviting the Chinese to work with us, to help us, and we help them to work with us. We fight to protect and safeguard our position, rights and interests in Sa as Sabah firstborn. 
Anak negeri Sabah Sarawak will fight against the divide and rule tactics which render them small, weak and powerless. We will fight any attempt to divide and rule. This is what is happening at the moment. And this tactic of divide and rule that is happening in Sabah is intended to keep everyone small, weak and powerless. So anak negeri, parti anak negeri will participate in election to create power block in the state assembly and parliament to influence policy decisions together with other, polit other opposition political parties of the same aims and objectives. That means we will work with other opposition political parties with the same aims and objectives to create a power block. A strong power block in the assembly and parliament. It also means to be in government. Parti Anak Negeri will fight to uphold the principle of religious freedom as enshrined in Batu Sumpah Keningau. Now I would like to stress this to the press. When we talk about freedom of religion, everybody says, Sudah ada freedom of religion. We are, we are taking the literal meaning of freedom of religion as promise guaranteed. I can tell you, the Batu Sumpah is a covenant. It's a covenant, okay? It's a covenant between the government of Malaysia and the people, the Anak Negeri of the Interior. They ask for three things. Freedom of religion, land must be under state power, and respect for the Adat. So we believe that this covenant is important and legally binding. And we want to uphold the principle of religious freedom as enshrined on Batu Sumpah Keningau, the Keningau Old Stone. So that means we will fight for the thousands of natives, for example, who are Christian and Muslim, but they hold ISIS that bear the word Islam, but could not change their religious status. They are being subjected to Sharia court, in and out for 20 years, cannot change. In creating difficulty for families, there are thousands of them. In Ulusugud, in one village alone, there are 60 in my hand. So, we feel we want to, we respect Islam as the state religion of Sabah in Malaysia. There is no question about it. But we will make sure that our state law on religious conversion is consistent with the Batu Sumpah Keningau to ensure citizens are free to choose, change and practice their own religion based on their belief and personal conviction. So it's a conscience, personal conscience. We uphold and fight for freedom of religion for Anak Negeri, Sabah and Sarawak as enshrined on the Keningau Old Stone, Malaysia Agreement, and the Federal Constitution. We are also united with all Malaysians in Sabah and Sarawak to oppose Act 355, which is the Hudud Law, because while all Malays in Semenanjung are Muslim, not all anak negeri in Sabah and Sarawak are Muslim. So you may implement in Semenanjung, but you cannot do it in Sabah and Sarawak. Because the Anak Negeri are not all Muslims. We fight to defend, number three, we fight to defend and safeguard the sanctity of Malaysian citizenship. Our government, our government, mean to say, when we are in government together with opposition, oppose granting of citizenship to foreigners without due process. Mean to say, somebody must apply to be considered and to be approved. We will fight and stop the activities of illegal syndicates giving citizenship documents to foreigners. We feel that this government now is not doing enough. They are not doing enough to, to stop all these 
syndicates and we believe it is still going on. But our government will use state powers on land and local government to deal with illegal immigrants and problem associated with it. Our government will reverse the change of political demography of Sabah. There is an attempt. I want to make this point. There is an attempt to change the political demography of Sabah. So the Anak Negeri will defend our political demography. When I said Anak Negeri, I'm talking about the Mamogun people, the Bajau Suluk who are Sabahan in the islands in Sabah, all the Pasisir Pantai, kan? Ini semua anak Sabah semua ini. And our Chinese brothers and sisters who are here, even before independence, together we want to defend our political demography. If there is any attempt to change that, we will fight. We may not be able to reverse it, but we can stop if we are in government. So, I want to make this announcement, which you can report on the press. <coughs> Our government will register the place of residence of all Malaysians of Sabah and Sarawak regions. So, you already have IC. Yes, you have IC, card pengenalan. There is nothing we can do with the card pengenalan. It's a federal matter. But, state government, we will amend the local government ordinance to require all citizens of Sabah origins to register their place of residence so we can issue you a residence ID a residence identification if you are from this village you must register you are from this village untuk memantapkan pengurusan JKKK and JKDB in town is JKDB Jawatan Kuasa Kemajuan uh, bandar kalau JKDB kan JKK is Jawatan Kuasa Kemudian Keselamatan Kampung so we want you to have two identification one you have a federal IC which we cannot change it's a federal matter but we will use that power and the local government ordinance to require our citizen in that local government which we have the right the majlis daerah can register. The JKK can register. And I want the Ketua Kampung to attest that this is true, Orang Sana. And I want the DO to sign in all districts. So once we have IDs, once they want to apply a trading license, they must produce two IC. They must now produce the federal IC. I want them also to produce the resident I see. And the federal government cannot do anything about that. Why? Because it's state power. It's my power as a state government. You cannot interfere. I have sovereign rights, total sovereign rights on land and local government. So I'm doing this because I just want to improve the administration of JKKK and JKDB. So those without surat beranak, they have to fill in a form. Okay? And they have to make sure they have to, the necessary uh, documentation to, to be approved by the DO as where your residence is. Okay? Now, number... Okay, the residence registration will serve as additional identification for genuine Sabahans. We will require all citizens in Sabah to present two identification on land transaction, applying for state job and applying for trading license. Purely for state matters. So you want to apply for state job, you want to apply for uh, land, you want to apply for trading license, you have to bring your IC. But in addition, you must also bring your your uh, residence ID. Okay. Number four. 
we fight to safeguard our NCR and native land. NCR is native customary. Now we are facing the phenomenon of land grab. Do you know what happened now? I heard one district, 200,000 acres has already been applied by companies that we don't know where they are coming from. We are saying this. Um, I'm saying this. That we are very suspicious about all these big, big companies applying for big, big land in Sabah. I don't know who is approving them. Who is giving the authority for them to even register the application. <clears throat> Sometimes I don't even know why did all these big companies apply NCR land that is already owned by Orang Kampung for hundreds of years. It is happening in my own area in Ulusugut. 3,000 acres. People are living there for home. Their geta, their kelapa sawit, everything, their house is there. Only to find that their land now belongs to a big company. Now they have to go to court to fight their rights. When they raise arms, the police come and fight them. But now they are going to court. They have engaged a lawyer. Now, our first action, our first action, our government, we will freeze all applications by companies. We say, I didn't say batala, I didn't say uh, cancel, just freeze. To make sure that the application does not affect the NCR, the native customer rights of all Sabahans. We want to make absolutely sure, so within 100 days, Boko dulu. Freeze. Because what is going on now is frightening. When one district, 200,000 is already being applied for. I'm not accusing hasil bumi, uh, pejabat tanah, audio of corruption lah. I'm not accusing anything like that. But there are suspicion this is going on. So we want to make sure that we want to protect our NCR land. So the second thing we want to do is we will amend the land law. We will amend the land law to enable us to register NCR. Mean to say, if I have a piece of land, 15 acres, I have my house there, I have my kandang ayam there, I have my trees, everything I have there, I have my rentis, my sempadan, then I have my agreement with my neighbors and the JKK Ketua Kampung sign. I want to, I want to have the rights to register at the land office. So we will create that, that they can register while waiting for it is being surveyed and you have an empty title. So when anybody who wants to apply land, the government must make sure it doesn't intrude into NCR. So, by registering the NCR, we are providing proof of ownership. Unlike now, they give it to companies first, then you fight the company. Now different. The company can't even apply for the land because we have established our NCR rights. So, we are going to do that. We are going to uh, amend the land code to empower NCR land owners. We will do that to protect our NCR land. And we also want to set up the anti-tribunal. The chief minister said tidak perlu. But our government will set up the anti-land tribunal. Why? When there is a dispute about land matters, anti-land, the orang kampung cannot afford to go to Kota Kinabalu. So expensive. So by setting up the anti land tribunal, the anti the tribunal will go to Ranau. And the village they can hear the grievances in Ranau. No need to go to Tekinabalu. Like the case in Ranau, Ulusugud, they have to come all the way to Keke. I can tell you some of them tidak dapat tidur hotel, tidur di Taman Bunga saja. Kasihan. And then bila dia mau datang, semua pemilik mau datang. Siapa dapat tahan tunggu 2, 3, 4 hari di keke? 
So we want to set the land tribunal to serve the community. So we disagree with the chief minister who says, tidak boleh. We disagree. The moment 100 days we are in government, we will set up, we will introduce this policy initiative to set up the tribunal. We also want to set up our anti-land bank. One of the frightening things about anti-land now is that when our people short of cash, they go to the Along and they always put the uh, their land title as guarantee. Often, in three months, gone already. They cannot pay. So we want to have an anti-land bank. And this was first mooted out during the um, Mamagun National Congress uh, launching, where I was the president, then I was the president. There is a demand from our members, the Mamagun National Congress, to set up the anti-land bank. So our government will set up the anti-land bank where landowners who need money urgently can come to this agency, borrow 10,000 for instance, and put their land. The government is not interested in your land. They just want to keep your land, you don't give it to other people. So say five years, your children go to university. In five years, you only pay the interest. If 10%, say 100 ringgit per month. Until such time, you can now go and take back your land. You pay in full. After your ch children go back from university, then you pay the principal or you can make other arrangements with relatives. But we want to make sure the land stay in the hands of the owner. So we want to do that because we want to use our power as an agreed to help the an agreed retain their land. Otherwise, we are losing a lot of land. Not only we are losing the right to determine the destiny of our country, we are losing also the right even to determine uh, our land. So number five, like all political parties in Sabah, we fight to restore provisions of Malaysia Agreement 1963. which is not complied and implemented. I, we are like any other political parties. We support them, but this is also our, our fight. But we are a little bit different. The government now has set up a review committee to review only one thing. The 40% uh, income, uh, Sabah's rise to the 40% income of the state. But within 100 days, our government will set up an intergovernmental committee for Malaysia Agreement 1963. Intergovernmental Review Committee, sorry, Review Committee. Intergovernmental Review Committee for Malaysia Agreement 1963 to determine the compliance of Malaysia Agreement 1963. And this committee, we will engage the best mind in the country to advise the state government. We will engage the Queen Council from England, ex expert in constitutional law, to advise the state government in this matter. We know, I want to make this statement. I read the statement today. Somebody is supporting the Sarawak, what they did, sending legal team to England. We are different. Sarawak do their own thing. We will pursue this matter. We also will send our team from Sabah. We just don't want to wait for Sarawak. They get their outcome and then we support. No. Not only we are sending our team to England, UK, we are taking the Queen Consul from there to come to Sabah. Advices. We will engage the best lawyers, private lawyers, also in Sabah. We will engage the top professors, history professors, to advise us what actually happened. There are three things that we want to know under review committee. 
Number one, we want to know what was promised in writing and not in writing that compelled our independent forefathers to join Malaysia. I want them to find out apa yang dijanjikan bertulis, apa yang dijanjikan tidak bertulis. Yang kedua, the review committee will find out what are the constitutional changes that took place both at the federal level and state level. We want to know apa yang diubah di peringkat federal dan juga state. Apa yang dia ubah? Yang ketiga, three, we want to know what we can do now. What can we do now? Is there anything that we can do now? Can we really claim? Can we really reverse? We want to know the recommendation of this committee. Okay? It's a government committee. And I'm inviting my counterpart from Sarawak and from Semenanjung to be part of this intergovernmental committee to ensure transparency, transparent way of doing things. Okay? Now, the difference between them and us, they hold seminars, talk, things like that for 30 years already. We want action that can produce results. So we will bring the recommendation to Dewan Undangan Negeri, to the State Assembly. We will report to the State Assembly. And we want the State Assembly to vote whether to support or not support. If they support, that means the state government is duty-bound to write, to demand the federal government to comply. If there is a conflict, disagreement between state and federal, there is a constitutional provision which says any conflict between state and federal must be resolved through the federal court. This is a federal uh, provision. So, we don't want to politicize. We are opposed to Sabah Sarawak Keluar Malaysia. We disagree with their move. We put our trust in the government system, the Mahkamah. So we are going to bring this case to the federal court. If we have to summon the federal, the federal government, we summon the federal government. But we will bring our demand, our conflict, to the federal court and we want the federal court to decide and we will engage again our queen consul our top lawyers our top historians to be part of our team to the help the state to fight for what is rightly ours based on malaysia agreement remember the malaysia agreement says anything that was promised even unwritten must be fulfilled So I'm not saying anything about what is not fulfilled, what is not complied, because we are lay people, we don't know. So we will get the expert opinion, and when they come up with their statement, their findings, then we will accept what they have. For now, let's focus on winning the government first. We set up our government. I'm inviting all Sabahan. Let's bend together, form a new government, a new perspective, a new vision, a new mission, a new way of fighting, not Kluar Malaysia, but fighting the power that has been holding us in this way for a long, long time. And it can only, it can only be done within the framework of the anak negeri. The anak negeri of Sabah in Sarawak. Okay. Now, I would like to make this statement. Party anak negeri will work with other opposition political parties of similar aims and objectives to achieve our five-point objective. We will put our five-point demand on the table. Somebody has 50 perjuangan, 26 perjuangan, 15 perjuangan, no. We want to limit to five. Why? If we are in government, they gave me, the Momogun give me 20 seats, the Chinese give me 10 seats. 
and maybe Warisan can get more than 10 seats. We are in government already. We are not fighting to become chief minister. Anybody can become the chief minister as long as they agree to our five demands. We will not negotiate our position. We negotiate on behalf of the riot the achievement of the five conditions first. Siapa yang setuju ini lima? Sign dulu. After they agree, then we talk about position. Bukan Ketua Menteri pun tiada hal, tiada masalah. Kan? But I want to promise to the rakyat. Unlike other political parties, after election, they only talk about berapa dapat Menteri, berapa Chairman, berapa timbalan, <laughs> berapa ini. We are not like that. After pilihan raya, the first thing we do is ini dulu syarat. We have to serve the rakyat, fight for the rakyat, fulfill the aspiration of the rakyat. Once we have already won the state government, only then we can negotiate with the federal government on federal matters, parliamentary matters. That is a separate matter altogether. That's why you will not be listening to. We don't want to talk about uh, about even like uh, you know this. Um, one MDB. Yeah, we can talk about it in the coffee shop. But as a policy statement, what can we do about it? Learn to talk about corruption, yes. We talk about personal integrity. But then pointing fingers, you know, is a big thing for us. Even like GST, a lot of other things, federal matters. We will fight on all these things when we are in the, we are at the state government. Just like Sarawak. When you already hold the state government, you can you can make a stand. But as a political party, cannot. When you have one seat only, three seats only, five seats only, you talk so big, what for? Nobody listen to you. But as a state government, I'm telling the riot in Sabah, as a state government, the federal government will listen to you. So we make sure. We are not anti-federal. We will work with federal government. We work with federal government because we need to work with the government at the federal level to bring prosperity to our state. We may now we disagree with AMNO. I disagree with AMNO. I disagree with Barisan National. It's not government. It's the political party, the policymakers that we are fighting. You know, a government. Does not contest election, right? It's a political party. So a lot of people confuse between government and opposition. No, government does not contest election. It's the political party. After Bubar, when the government we are only caretaker. All political parties samarata. So every political party has the right to be part of the government. So that is my uh, statement today. And I'm open for questions. Thank you. Any question? <coughs> Have any question? <laughs> no question. Interesting, huh? No question. <laughs> okay. Eh, kau bukan press, tidak? Tidak boleh. Ini untuk press saja. Ah, ini press. Ah. You might want to ask about um, our relationship with other political parties. Because I already clarified that earlier. Azman, Reswalan. Tidak ada juga. Semua tepat. <laughs> okay. If there is no question, ha? Huh? Ah. So, with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.